pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Okay. Next order is the approval of our March 9th meeting minutes. I move that we accept the minutes as presented. Second. A motion and a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Noah? Well, <laughs> Ken? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself is yes. Did Ed hear us? Is, uh, he said yes, I believe. Um, is our first public comment is uh, we had nobody give us any questions or comment. We have no public hearings. Um, we do not have any reports of committees today. Nope. Is, uh, or department reports. That'll bring us down to our appointments. Our first appointment, well, we have actually have two uh, for the Recreation Commission. Is yeah, the first... excuse me, Tom. Sandy Keys cannot make it. Sandy uh, won't be able to make it? Sandy, yeah. So she would right. like to still be considered. Angela totally supports her um, application. Well, I, I can I can speak for Sandy. I know her well. Okay. And, uh, and the other, we have uh, Drew McCormick. Requesting to be a regular member for a three year term. And Sandy Keys, an alternate member for a one year term. Um, we'll start with Drew. Welcome, Drew. Hi, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Not bad. Um, if you could just give us a little bit of your background and tell us why yep. you would like to be on the Rec Commission. Sure. Um, well, I grew up in Berwick um, and I recently moved back just last year. So I'm looking to get a little more involved in the town and politics, but more on the fun side with recreation, I figured. Um, and as a kid, I have a lot of fond memories of the rec field, although my, my mom was the rec director. So I certainly wasn't the most popular kid at camp. Um, she can be a little hard sometimes, but I love the rec field and um, played a lot of sports growing up and just would like to get involved. And I know we have a new recreation director, so I'm hoping to help her breathe some life back into the whole thing. And, uh, any questions from the board members for Drew? No, we appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, um, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll say I, I've known Drew all of her life. And, uh, <laughs> is, um, is, is, uh, We've had some good times together over the years as uh, we actually climbed Mount Blue together when she was very young. Uh, yep. I don't know yep. if you remember that or not. But I do. Is, uh, yeah. We, is, um, so if there are no further questions for Drew, is uh, looking for a motion? A motion. We have a motion to point Drew to the regular member of three year. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself is yes. Thank you, Drew. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sandy Keys, um, she's been a resident of Burwick for many, many years. And she was actually the recreation director for Burwick back in the 90s, I believe it was, um, is she been she had been you know, active in other things in her life, but now she's getting ready to get back in, much as Drew said, she'd like to get back involved, but not too hard. So she's looking to be appointed as an alternate member for a one-year term. Um, are there any questions? Maybe I can answer from the answer for the board. If not, I'll be looking for a motion to appoint. So moved. We have a motion, second. do I have a second? second? We have a motion and a second. No further discussion, I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. 
Mark? Yes. And myself is yes. Five zero. <clears throat> All right. Under unfinished business, we were told <laughs> by the town's attorneys that we needed to make a few adjustments as far as how the town warrant was printed out is none of the numbers have changed from what we've already voted on is all that has been done is in some of the articles the notes were incorporated into the question by the attorneys so <clears throat> i need to go down through each and every article that they changed um only the wording of the ones that changed that's all we're doing yeah okay and uh, and there is one additional article at the end, if I can find that, is um, Article 38, I believe it was, is uh, that one we'll need to take a new vote on. So here we go for the marathon reading again. Article one is to elect a moderator to preside over the meeting. Article two, elect by secret ballot two selectmen for a three-year term and one school board member for three years. Article three, shall the town vote to adopt the proposed amendments to the land use ordinance, exhibit A attached. The board of selectmen recommends a yes vote, five zero. Article four, shall the town vote to adopt the proposed amendments to the zoning map, article B, uh, exhibit B attached. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote, 5-0. Article 5, shall the town vote to adopt the proposed ordinance entitled Berwick Food Sovereignty? Exhibit 3 attached. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote, 5-0. Article 6, shall the town vote to use up to $2,400,000 from estimated revenues to reduce the amount to be raised by taxation in fiscal year 21-22, the Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote. Article 7, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $415,400 for the general expense account to fund a variety of general expenses which are not easily classified from an accounting perspective under other departments including a variety of required insurance premiums, audit services, legal services rendered by the town attorney, street lights and traffic signals for fiscal year 2021-22. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote, 5-0. Article eight, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $481,450 for the town administration account for fiscal year 2021-22. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote, 5-0. Article nine, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $290,904 for the town clerk account for fiscal year 2021-22. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 10, shall the vote Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $186,601 for the planning account for fiscal year 2021-22? The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $117,832 for the assessor's office account for fiscal year 2021-22? The Board of Selectmen recommend a yes vote, 5-0. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $165,750 for the town hall account for fiscal year 2021-22? The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 13, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $54,000 $526 as a second loan payment for the purchase of LED lighting as authorized by passage of Article 3 at the November 5th, 2019 Supplemental Town Meeting. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 
Article 14, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $10,000 for the general assistance account for fiscal year 2021-22. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 15, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $2,060,679 for the police department account for fiscal year 2021-22. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,119,667 for the fire department account for fiscal year 2021-22. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote 5-0. Article 17. So the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,237,522 for the public works account for fiscal year 2021-22. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 18, so the town vote to authorize the expenditure of all revenues received from the state of Maine Urban Rural Initiative Program for fiscal year 2021-22 for road improvements as authorized by the program with unspent balances to be carried forward each year. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 19, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $591,255 for the refuse disposal account, which funds the operations of the Berwick Transfer Station for fiscal year 2021-22. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 20, so the town vote to raise and appropriate from taxes the sum of $263,667 for the recreation account for fiscal year 2021-22. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 21. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $291,702 for the Berwick Public Library account for fiscal year 2021-22. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 22. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $498,646 for debt service to cover this appropriation for fiscal year 2021-22 and as authorized by the passage of Article 31 and 32 at the 2016 annual town meeting and Article, Article 5 at the November, November 6, 2018 referendum election. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 23. So the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $21,700 for the Community Agency Appropriations Account which will be used to make con contributions to and at the request of the following outside agencies or purposes, Coast Bus Service, Memorial Day Services, Seacoast Shipyard Association, for fiscal year 2021 and 22. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of five to zero. Article 24, Tell, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $196,388 for the annual fire protection for fire hydrants costs for fiscal year 2021-22. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of five to zero. <clears throat> Article 25, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $600,000 for its use for, pulp, for road, bridge, and sidewalk construction and repairs as well as town parking lots and public ways, and including expenses for curbing, drainage, and engineering fees when required, with the funds to be used in conjunction with the State of Maine Urban Rural Initiative Program and with unspent balances to be carried forward each year. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 26. So the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $23,900 for the federal stormwater program, which implements state and federal permitting requirements for discharge from municipal separate stormwater sewer systems, MS4s, for fiscal year 2021-22, for 
and place this amount into the account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of five to zero. Article 27. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $10,000 for economic development purposes for fiscal year 2021-22 and place this amount into the account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 28. Shall the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a purchase and sale agreement with landowners and to purchase property from landowners using impact fees that are allowed to be used for these types of community projects for the purpose that allows the expansion of Memorial Field. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 29. So the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to sell or transfer 10 School Street map U001 lot 007, a town owned property, which is the old fire station, including land and buildings and including the execution of all agreements and other documentation to effect such sale or transfer as it deems advisable in the best interest of the town and to use all funding to offset the fire station bond. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of five to zero. Article 30, so the town approve a capital project consisting of various renovations, upgrades and improvements to the Berwick water plant, including engineering and design costs, transaction costs and other expenses reasonably related thereto, appropriate the sum of $1,200,000 to provide for the cost of the project and to raise funds from users fees, Authorize the treasurer and chairman of the Board of Selectmen to fund appropriation through the issuance of general obligation securities of the town with or without call provisions, with or without premiums, including temporary notes in anticipation of the sale thereof, in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $1,200,000, and to delegate to the treasurer and the chairman of the Board of Selectmen the authority and discretion to fix the date, maturities, interest rates, denominations, calls for redemption with or without premium, reach the funding form, and other details of said securities, including authority to execute and deliver the securities on behalf of the town. <clears throat> An estimated interest rate. Oh, Patty, do I have to read the financial statement that goes with that? Okay, the financial statement, the total town indebted indebtedness, bonds outstanding and unpaid after budgeted payments, $7,012,230, bonds authorized and non-issued, zero. Additional bonds to be issued if this article is approved, 1,200,000, total indebtedness with approval of this article is $8,212,230. At an estimated interest rate of 1%, the estimated cost of these bonds over a period of 20 years will be $129,967.58 interest and $12,000 in fees or a total debt service of $1,468,000. Funding will be raised by user fees. Validity of the bonds and of the voters' ratification of the bonds may not be affected by any errors in the above estimates. The actual amount of the total debt service for the bond issues varies from if the total if the actual amount of the total debt service for the bond issue varies from the estimate, the ratification by the electors is never, nevertheless conclusive and the validity is not affected by reason of the variance. Yeah. The Board of Selectmen yes, recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Please don't make me read that again. <laughs> <laughs> Article 31. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 
dollars for debt service in fiscal year 2021-22 as authorized by the passage of article 37 at the 1997 annual town meeting which will fund one half the cost of repayment for the water department bond issued by the federal rural development agency for the new water treatment plant in 1999 the board of selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0 Article 32, <clears throat> shall the town vote to accept James Way as a public right of way as requested by residents? The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 33, shall the town vote to accept River Bend as a public right of way as requested by residents? The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. <clears throat> Article 34, shall the town vote to authorize the select board and treasure to accept on behalf of the town any gifts of money or property, including trust funds that may be given or left to the town for the purpose of supporting Berwick Community Television, which is currently funded entirely by franchise fees paid by the cable company Comcast, placing such funds into a non-lapsing account and to author authorize the expenditures of any such funds for the open operating expenses of and or capital improvements for Berwick Community Television. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 35, <clears throat> shall the town vote to authorize the use of interest only from the Lena Clark Trust Fund. The interest balance as of June 30th, 2020 was $27,350 which was the close of the prior fiscal year and use the funds when there are major repairs or maintenance needs at the town hall. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 36, shall the town vote to charge interest on unpaid taxes at a rate of 6% per annum and to set the date when taxes committed for fiscal year 2021-22, which is July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022, become due and payable as of October 12th, 2021 and April 12th, 2022, with said interest to be collected after October 13th, 2021 and April 13th, 2022, and allow the tax collector to accept payment of taxes prior to the tax commitment date. The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote of 5-0. Article 37. Shall the town vote to set an interest rate of 4% as allowed by state law as a rate to be paid to taxpayers who pay amounts in excess of amounts finally assessed and authorize any such interest paid on collectible taxes or abatements granted to be charged against the annual overlay? The Board of Selectmen recommends a yes vote, 5-0. And Article 38, and this is, this is the new one. We have not voted on this as I will expect the brief explanation from the town manager. Article 38, shall the town vote to increase the property tax levy limit, LD1, established for the town of Burke by state law in the event that the municipal budget approved under preceding articles will result in a tax commitment that is greater than the property tax levy limit for current and future years. Could you explain that? <laughs> I'm not sure exactly the date, but the state during uh, early or mid 2000s, 2021, 20, or uh, they put in the legislation a bill to try to keep communities not to overtax and go crazy, I guess, and keeping it somewhat under control. Uh, there is a formula that's used to the Department of Revenue uh, that we are required to calculate out, the assessors do it every year, to how much uh, based on a percentage uh, that's given us by the Revenue Department, we can uh, increase our expenditures. Uh, this article allows us, which is sometimes very, very difficult if you have uh, needs that and we, this budget is very basic. Uh, so sometimes you have to have authorization uh, to exceed the uh, 
tax levy amount, which is uh, pretty common in most towns that you do it every year to vote on that. Um, otherwise, it, uh, the revenue department gets after you for if you exceed that. Um, we've always been able to stay within that, I think, uh, historically. So it's, um, and that's what it means. All right, any questions for the town manager? Doesn't appear to be. As I, I am familiar with it, I don't know the whole background of it. No, it's is um, so. It was an article. There was a I can remember. I was in green at the time. It was a big argument about uh, LD one A or something, and there's a led by somebody out of the Brunswick Topsom area um, to cap taxes failed. Thank goodness, but uh, but out of that, the revenue department and legislative people put this in place, and it's it's been helpful. So it's not a bad thing. It just helps us control uh, and things and keep things in check. Okay. Um, if there are no further questions, as it will be a simple uh, yes and no vote is by show of hands. All those of in favor of putting this on the warrant, Article 38 as read, say aye, raise your hands. Looks like 5 0, Patty. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have to do that again. <laughs> yeah, <Six>. promise. <laughs> six, 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 six. Go over there. Okay, back on to the regular meeting. Town manager's report. I have a, a few things here. I'm, I'm going to read a couple of letters uh, that deals with our staff and some of our departments. The first one was written to Mr. Elbridge. They kind of make, crossed. It's supposed to be Mr. Eldridge. Congratulations are in order for the town of Berwick and for Patricia Murray, town clerk. The Maine Town and City Clerks Association has awarded Patricia certification, which carries the distinction of a certified clerk of Maine, CCM status. This certification process has required many hours of dedication to achieve. The certification process requires that applicants receive training in a number of courses that relate to their field of expertise and continue with this education in an effort to retain their certification status. Patricia will be recognized for receiving this certification at the Maine Town and the City Clerks Association's annual meeting uh, in September. Um, and the Maine Town and the City Clerks Association understands the investment of time and resources it takes to achieve this. Uh, benefits for uh, the certification include ex expanded network of peers, enhanced knowledge of applicable state and federal laws, exposure to broadened processes and municipalities across the state, and instills a deeper sense of confidence. In addition to municipalities may further benefit with reduced fees for insurance and bonds. Again, congratulations to Patricia Murray. And she joins a prestigious group of municipal clerks who approach their career with the utmost professionalism and well-earned. Um, congratulations, Patty. This is a very, main town and city clerks, I think is, is a pretty prestigious and pretty good group. I've dealt with them off and on, but, uh, the other one I have is for our police department. Uh, as you know, Chief Town has been talking about the Maine Law Enforcement Accreditation Program. And they have, uh, I'll read what they said. The accrediting body of the Maine Chiefs of uh, Police Association met recently to review the police, uh, Burt Police Department's assessment report, which was compiled by a team of trained uh, MELEAP assessors following a careful evaluation of your agency. They ensure that the candidate agencies have addressed the most critical of law enforcement issues in both policies as well as actual operations. The assessment process verifies that departments have the required policies, procedures, training, and physical infrastructure to comply with their standards. Um, uh, it is with great pride and pleasure to inform you that the LEAP Committee voted unanimously to award the Berwick Police Department with accreditation status. It's truly a pleasure working with not only yourself, but your entire team. This is a process that they've been doing for over a year. 
Uh, we're one of the only communities in York County that has this. Um, I give congratulations to the department. They all work pretty hard to, right. to get this. And it just goes to show um, the caliber of what we have in our police yeah. department. It's very exciting. Congratulations to all of them also. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Um, other things. Uh, the edge, just so the public knows, you'll start seeing demolition next week of the other two buildings across the street here. And uh, hopefully that will take probably two, a few weeks, but after that, you'll start seeing, they, I don't think they've finished the planning board process yet, but no. they will hopefully break ground this spring. Uh, we just submitted our stormwater management plan to the state, uh, Christy, uh, Robowski, who is our engineering firm that she, we share with other communities, finished it up. I'm going to have it put up on the website and I'll send you each copies of it. It's quite thick, uh, but they, she's done a great job and we've had a lot of meetings, James and uh, uh, Jody and, and code enforcement who deal with all that uh, have met numerous times. So that's been submitted and should, it's very good. She's excellent at what she does. Uh, today, um, James and I met with the MDOT to talk about shovel-ready projects. Um, that was an interesting discussion, and they know about as much as we do about the stimulus fund, the stimulus fund that's coming. But <laughs> um, but they we're going to send them a list of all the projects we have ready to go. In the same, uh, we had another meeting earlier on Monday with uh, Christy, our engineer, about the MS4 project. Uh, and uh, we had our engineers from uh, Jason Reddy from Malone and McBroom at, at that meeting as well. And um, talking about trying to find stimulus money, which is a shovel ready project that engineering is all done on that project. And we're just waiting for funds and we're going to send that off to um, the governor's office, she has a person, staff person who is dealing with shovel ready projects. It's all this money is not coming through the DEP. So we wanna make sure we get our name on the list and uh, hopefully um, we'll be able to secure some funding. Um, we talked with the DOT, we talked about bridges. We talked about the Sawmill Hill project uh, and the street lights downtown and some of the other sidewalks downtown and hopefully, and I guess uh, Great Falls Construction has been in conversations with James about uh, matching funds if we need to, they'll work with us. So that's encouraging. Uh, we also met uh, with Revision Energy this week on to look at a proposal that they are making for us to uh, save money on electricity. Um, we've been bombarded by a number of different outfits, uh, one being company called Best Practices, which is a middleman, and they look around, try to find you savings, uh, and also are, are proposing that we take part in uh, a solar farm, one in uh, uh, Waterboro, a Waterboro. And Revision has a, uh, a putting together a solar farm in Sydney, uh, and it's a 20 year, each of these are a 20 year commitment but uh, I'm not ready to say yes. And I'm gonna, next meeting, I'll bring you documents and send, give you a time to uh, read it. I'll send it out to you as you can take a look and we can talk about what we wanna do, uh, if we wanna do anything. Um, otherwise that's all I have. Any questions or? It'd be nice to look, to see if you can buy power from the one that's going to be built now in 236. Yeah, guys just saw that today. Holy cow, that's huge. Yeah, that's West Bodwell's uh, right. project. Yeah. There's a, just, they rent the land from them. Right, yeah, right. it's a uh, lease deal. Right. The, but, uh, but the same one, the, 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 the planning board's working on one over on Hubbard Road up on the Lebanon end, too. Oh, big, really? bigger than that one. Yeah, I think it's about 20 acres. So, how, how big is Lessons? How many acres? I think it's the planning board. I was, I, I was in the planning board. It's 12 acres, I think, is what. what yeah, we'll, re we'll reach out to both of them and see. How they're managing the money, you know, going into the grid. Yeah, it'd be nice to do something with somebody in Berwick. So, didn't it was a time that we talked about um, putting a solar farm on top of it? 
Yes, I, I talked to Revision about that and they are gonna work up the numbers. We talked about putting solar panels on the police station roof, on the roof of the new fire station and also behind the uh, police department on that bank. What about the, what about- You're talking about it, the sewer treatment, sewer treatment plant. plant yeah. Oh, I don't- you don't have, You're not mic'd up. I know Jay Wheeler early on had talked about that and I don't, I haven't heard much about it recently. Yeah. So I can reach out to Jay and see if it's something that they're considering. Yeah. Uh, seems okay. to be the I trend. Have a question. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. We talked about the, the um, um, money for the water treatment, right? The what? Water treatment plant. Yes. Is the water treatment plant break even or do we make money on that? How, what's going on with that? It's now? usually a break even. So it's about a break even. It's not costing yeah. us any money, but we're not making it. Well, this year, uh, we uh, it's going to be very tight this year. Uh, what's that mean? We're making money on it or we're losing money on it? We, well, you're probably going to spend more than you take in. Take right? in. That's it. Well, a lot of go, a lot of you know, upkeep. With uh, doing. A lot of stuff that we've been uh, trying to get upkeep on. And plus, uh, we're chasing money for people to pay their bills. Water bills? Yeah. So it's been it's difficult for some people right now with this pandemic stuff going on. I and mean, we do, I think, you know, the, the finance office does a good job chasing it. And, uh, and we have the authority to shut people off if they don't pay. Um, so it's, uh, it's a chasing that, game. It just happened because of the COVID? You know it's because of the COVID or has that always been a, a problem? I don't think it's ever been as bad as it is right now. Yeah, it's never been a major problem. No, they, they're, they're pretty good few, about collecting. But you know, Lisa Eustis used to do it, and then James did it for quite a while, uh, and then uh, now Cole McIntyre is doing it. Um, and people respond when we tell them we're going to turn the water off. So it's it's just a matter of time. But um, this year's budget. Uh, it's going to be very different. Um, I haven't put it on paper. I've got it all on paper. I just want to fine tune it before I bring it to you. How much of an increase do you think? I don't know yet. I've got to look at the how we have probably going to have to notify the PUC that we're looking at a, a rate increase. Yeah, you have to go through the we, hearing. We've got about $130,000 of uh, capital improvement projects that need to be done. Uh, a lot of it's going to depend on what we find for water because luckily we don't have to go to the voters for this. It's only the, you as a board who approves it. Um, and they will start in April, start uh, doing some test, you know, meeting with the landowners that said that you could drill and then pick out the ones they want to drill on. Um, and they had about eight different people say they could. So that's a plus. Um, and if they can find the water quality that we're looking for and the volume, we will still have to do some upgrades. I mean, right. you, you're working on two pumps that you have in, in the uh, plant right now that one, aren't big enough to really do what they're supposed to do. And two, they're as old as the plant is. They have not been replaced ever. We can't get any state money for that? What? Maybe well, if they, if they sign the next, the, out of the, coming out of the Congress is uh, this next infrastructure bill, and it's got money, yeah, it's got a bunch of money right? in it for water and sewer projects. So I'm hoping uh, that we can benefit from that. Yeah, and, and there again, we'll be ahead of the game because we've already started the engineering and everything. That's right. We've already started all that work. Right. So we were ahead of the game, but it's just a matter of getting people's attention and uh, making sure that we're on the list. We have, um, you know, the, the MS4 project is a $1.3, $1.5 million project. And we I've pushed it off the last two years. And we got the, yeah, up on uh, Molten yeah. Road. Um, That's so, that, we have to do that, the state, right? The federal government That's mandates federal. that. Federal government. Yeah. So if I'm, they've, been, they've been lenient because they know it's been hard. You know, that's like the, the last- We get a couple more years out until we get problems well, with COVID. <laughs> yeah. Well, Christine's, done a, sure, Christine's done a good job yeah. pushing it back. Yeah. But um, she has to have good reasoning. And, and right. We got it, COVID. Yeah. Well, well, it's, well, well, it's not just that, is we have to upgrade a, a water plant, you know. Right. Yeah. Which is more important. Right. Yeah. So that's true. Well, so a lot, lot going on. But, all right. All right. Anything, any other questions for Steve? Hey, Patty, I want to circle back to you if I could. 
is um, the uh, signing for the town meeting warrant in the proposed land use ordinance. And since we've already voted on all the articles, do we actually need to vote on those? No, you're just signing that. that because that's we've already voted, voted on everything. All yeah. right, that's what I thought. All right, thank you. thank you. And Angela, can you hear me? I, I can. I, are you waiting for your appointments to your board? No, Patty already told me that they got appointed. Okay. All right, I was gonna say, I didn't want you just hanging around just waiting, thinking that you were waiting for us. Okay. Oh, no, I like to listen in since I haven't been around to yeah. hear what's happening in town. You're that bored, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're moving on. <laughs> um, is I have nothing under Selectman's communications that'll bring us to our uh, accounts payable. We have a payroll warrant, 58, for March 18th, 2021, the amount of $70,265.47. We have an account payable warrant, 60, for March 23rd, 2021, the amount of $284,626.67. And we have a payroll warrant number 59 for March 25th, 2021 for the amount of $71,088.65. I make a motion that we pay our bills. Do I have a second? A second. We have a motion and a second. I'll go through the roll if there's no further discussion. Is Ed? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself is a yes. Okay. Thank you. That brings us to new business. Now, first up on new business, we have Americans with Disabilities Act preservation resolution by the Beacon of Sovereignty. Um, this has not been brought forth by a resident of Berwick. Um, is I did a little bit of research on the Beacon of Sovereignty and all I could basically find was that it's a Facebook page. Um, it appears that they send these out to all the town councils and select boards and things like that, just getting people to do it. It is basically they're saying that the CDC requirements both the Maine and the federal CDC requirements for wearing masks goes against the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, this has been addressed multiple times in multiple places as for Berwick is um, our chief medical person, like emergency person was De Chief Dennis Plant. Yep. And uh, he follows the uh, York County Emergency Management protocols, the main CDC protocols, and the federal CDC protocol. So I don't see where we have a need to do this. If there's any of you want to further discuss this, is go right ahead. Otherwise, uh, we'll pass on it. Any willingness? It doesn't look like it. Tom, my, my only comment is it refers back to uh, the governor's executive order and right. thinks that that's incorrect. I read the executive order and nothing in the executive order specifically says it uh, detracts from disabled people. And it's, it specifically says nothing should be interpreted or prohibiting a reasonable accommodation for those with a disability. So. Right. I don't see where this resolution does anything other than get people up in arms. Yep. All right. With that, we'll move on. Is the York County Budget Committee caucuses? It's at this time of year. Uh, they are asking uh, people who would like to uh, sit on the committee. Uh, there's a caucus uh, Wednesday, April 14th at the York County Courthouse. Um, to um, pick representatives if you're interested. Um, so it's, it has to be uh, elected officials from a 29 
participating cities and towns. Uh, if anybody's interested, uh, write that down. Wednesday, April 14th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. If anybody's interested, let me know and I'll forward you some more information. I'll speak up at once. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll move on. <laughs> is, uh, we have no quick claim deeds. Is we'll go to our abatements, supplements, and farmland penalties. Karen, are you with us? Our assessor, Karen Fortier, is, uh, we'll wait for her. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. There she is. There she Hello. Is. How are you? Good, thank you. How are all of you? We, we seem to be doing all right. We're still moving along in our meeting, so. <laughs> yes, I've been listening, so it's, that's, that's good. good. Good stuff happening in Berwick. Uh, we have a few items um, for tonight. Uh, we start off with um, three abatements. And I'd like to talk about all three of them at once because they're they're all related. I, I, I'm familiar. I'm familiar with the land and the people involved. So yeah, I I, I was going to suggest we do the same thing. Right. So uh, basically, um, there's three abatements that resulted from um, a lot split. There was a parcel on Mountain View Road. The mother lot um, split off three lots. Um, and the mother lot had mountain views and it had a land factor on it. However, and we transferred that to each of these three parcels. However, when we went to the site again, we went down and actually the road really slopes down so that these lots actually just have a standard average view of the woods and not a superior uh, mountain view. So as a result of the change in this land factor, the assessed value was reduced for all three of these parcels by the same amount, which is $14,700. So it results um, in a recommendation for an abatement to be granted to each of these uh, in the amount of $284.59. And the parcels are identified by their map and lot on Mountain Road. The uh, map is R36, lot 16-1, lot R36, 16-2, in R36-16-3. Yeah, I, like I said, I'm, I'm familiar with these parcels and uh, I know exactly what you're talking about because the, the road does slope down right. rather, rather precipitously there. And uh, yeah, they, they, don't, they do not have any views other than, like I said, of the, of the trees surrounding them. Um, are there any other questions for Karen? If not, I want to take a motion to uh, grant the abatement on all three parcels. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? If not, I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself is a yes. All right. Next up, Karen. So the next one is a farmland penalty. Um, this property is located on Portland Street. Uh, it's a uh, 51.6 acre parcel. It's map R72, lot 17. Um, and this property has been classified in the farmland program since 1991. Um, and just as a reminder, this classification provides for valuation of land based on its current use as farmland, rather than the potential fair market value for uses other than agriculture. So um, on March 9th, uh, the assessing office received a farmland application uh, from the new property owner um, who purchased the property in January uh, 24th of 2020. The property owner also submitted um, a recent land survey uh, of the subject showing an increase in acreage from 49 to 51.6. So we always um, adjust our uh, maps to uh, a certified surveyor's um, uh, uh, surveying of the land. So there was a, uh, an increase in acreage regarding that. So, but so therefore, according to the farmland application, 3.94 acres are being removed from farmland pasture classification. And as a result, the penalty must be assessed um, per the state law 
uh, for farmland penalty. The farmland penalty is equal to the taxes that would have been assessed had the property been assessed at its fair market value as of April 1st for the preceding five years, less any taxes paid during this period plus interest on the difference. And I included the farmland cal calculation spreadsheet uh, to show you how we determine the penalty. Um, and this, pen this spreadsheet was also provided to the property owner. So uh, he is aware in, of this penalty and how, it, how that works. Therefore, it's recommended that you approve a supplemental tax bill for this farmland penalty in the amount of $1,063.46 to the property owner for the removal of 3.94 acres from farmland pasture classification. Any questions for Karen? If not, do we have a motion? So moved. I have a, mo okay. I have a motion and I have a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Noah? Yes. Is uh, Ken? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself is a yes. All right. And next, Karen? Yep. So the last item um, is a uh, recommendation for a tree growth penalty. Uh, the property is located on Hubbard Road. Uh, map R23, lot five. It's a 23 acre parcel that's uh, all of its acreage currently is classified as tree growth. Um, on March 17th, the assessing office received a written request um, by the owners, Todd Brooks and Jennifer Porter um, to remove three acres from tree growth as noted on uh, their amended tree growth map. So when they remove um, acres from the tree growth, there are to tell us exactly where that is to be located. Um, so when we, we, we updated our application and the map as a result. Um, assessing provided the property owners with a copy of the tree growth penalty calculation spreadsheet indicating the tree growth penalty for this removal um, is $14,960. Um, as a result of this request, the three acres classified as tree growth will now be assessed in accordance to market value and a tree growth penalty must be assessed pursuant to the tree growth law. Uh, please see the tree growth penalty calculation sheet for the details regarding this penalty. Um, and so for the tree growth penalty that uh, is determined by the difference between um, the uh, assessed ratio uh, when it's in tree growth minus the, uh, the uh, assessed value if it's not in tree growth so that difference is the amount of $74,800. Uh, the property has been in tree growth for 41 years. So the percentage is reduced to 20% of that difference. So that's how we get to the penalty amount of $14,960. Um, therefore, it's recommended that the select board approve the tree growth penalty in the amount of $14,960. Any questions of Karen? Karen, when are you in the office here? What days? Mondays and Wednesdays. First thing in the morning and yep. all yeah, day. all day. She's here all day, Monday and Wednesday. Yeah, okay. So Thanks. usually. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> is uh if no other questions, is um I'll entertain a motion to approve? A motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Now I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself is a yes. Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, thank Thanks. You. Bye. All right. That brings us, we have no other public comment. We do have an executive session. So before we get to that, does anybody else have any other business and non-agenda items they'd like to bring up? Doesn't appear to be. Um, is the executive session, we won't be taking a vote on anything. It's the discussion of personnel. So under Title I, subsection 405-6D for the discussion of personnel, I will make a motion that we go into executive session. Do I have a second? Second. I'll go through the roll. Ed? 
Yes. Noah? Yep, Noah's yes. Ken? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself is yes. Hey, just give us a few minutes to get things uh, straightened out here. And uh, thank you, everybody.